Good morning. I'm pleased to announce that today we are going to return to singing and coffee hour. All right, so let's go through our announcements. First one is about the blood drive. Uh, Saturday, August 13th, 9 to 3, and Deanna is the person to contact if you have any questions or need to make arrangements for that. It's here, it's here right, Deanna? Okay. All right. So basically, we just need to be here. All right. Second announcement is about the women's spiritual studies. They're continuing, and if you have any questions or comments, interest, um, contact Char for that um, particular event. Wednesdays at 11 a.m., and I guess um, the slide says they're usually a Zoom, so you probably have to get the link from Char. Okay, next is our big event for the church, Tractor Pull, August 18th through the 20th. And of course, Mr. Schaefer has had his ticket for quite some time. <laughs> um, Scott Beaker's in charge of the parking. He's right there if you have any questions. And there's a sign-up sheet. Is it out, out here? Yes. If you want to sign up, this is our really big fundraiser. I know um, Kel has volunteered, and even my mom volunteered mm -hmm. a couple years sitting out there taking the money. So, yeah, Deanna. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, the money uh, this year is going to go to the uh, repair of the stained glass window in the front here. Okay. So uh, anyone can sign up, and we're not going to try, hopefully, do a campaign for it. So, uh, yep, the money raised is going to go to the stained glass window repair. I think that's good to tell everyone that so they know. That's yep. good. Okay. So if you want to help contribute to repairing the stained glass, you can volunteer and help park tractor pull enthusiasts. <laughs> I love that we live in Lucky <laughs> that, <laughs> that weekend, because I think we can hear it, though, if we go outside. All right, next rummage sale. I was really like, whoa. Okay, when I read this one, um, it, uh, Saturday, August 27th, 8 to 3, uh, bring your stuff. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm reading this right. Erling can correct me or not. It says donations are being accepted. No clothing. We're not doing, we're not doing clothing, okay? Broken items are large appliances and large furniture. I have helped with this since... I was a toddler, I feel like. And every year we get stuff that's just junk. And we have to pay to get rid of it. And usually Cal has to haul it away somewhere. So, you know, if you wouldn't want it, I doubt somebody else would. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, there's a sheet with details and a sign-up sheet in Fellowship Hall. I saw the detail sheet out front here. So um, our contact person is you? Okay, Erlene is your contact person for that. All right. August 12th is our community meal, 5 to 6 p.m. Our hosts are Doug and Miriam Martin. Uh, volunteer week for the food pantry is this week. So, um, what is it? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, 1 to 3. Wednesday, 10 to noon. And Friday, 10 to noon. We need volunteers from the church at the food pantry. Go ahead, Erlene. Sharon, I'm not sure if I corrected that or not, but I consulted with your mom, and it's actually August 8th. The week of August 8th is when we will... You know, the last time I did this, <laughs> you goofed me up with Sorry the food about pantry. That. <laughs> oh, right. Actually, you can, you can point at your mom. I think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's the week of the 8th. So it would be the 8th, the 10th, and the 12th. Right? Okay. Um, and you'll notice Joanne isn't here today. She fell. She's okay. If I told you how she fell, she'd kill me. <laughs> she landed on her behind and had to scoot clear from the bathroom out to the living room to get her phone because why listen to Sharon and take your phone with you? And of course, she had to get clothes on before she would call them to come and get her up. But she's, she's sore, and I get, Kel said she told him Friday that she hurt her hip. And so I, I haven't talked to her since then. But um, she was told me she, she went to Dollar General. So, but I think she's pretty sore as far as that goes. And Dudley so much help. You know, mom's dog is like this big. And she's like, Dudley, get my phone. Okay, so keep her in your prayers though, because as you know, it's more difficult to move the older we get. Are there any more announcements? All right, if not, we'll begin our call to worship. Please stand and join in the call to worship. 
Our lives are in the care of God. God is the source of our peace and hope. This day we have come to praise and thank God for all that God has done for us. Come, let us open our hearts to the Lord. Let us rejoice in God's goodness and love. Let us pray together. Loving Lord, open our hearts this day in praise and thanksgiving for abundant acts of love. Challenge us to seek the values of heaven over the trappings of this world. May what we experience this day call us to a rich relationship with you as we learn to live out the calling of our baptism. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Let's share the peace with each other from a distance. <laughs> it's still no joke. My boss was down for yeah. down for 10 days yeah, with yeah. COVID. So it's still not a joke. Okay, our hymn of praise is This Is My Father's World. Today's Old Testament reading is from Hosea 11, verses 1 through 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. But the more I called to him, the farther he moved from me, offering sacrifices to the images of Baal and burning incense to idols. I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by the hand. But he doesn't know or even care that it was I who took care of him. I led Israel along with my ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke from his neck, and I myself stooped to feed him. But since my people refuse to return to me, they will return to Egypt and be forced to serve Assyria. War will swirl through their cities. Their enemies will crash through their gates. They will destroy them, trapping them in their own evil plans. For my people are determined to desert me. They call me the Most High, but they don't truly honor me. Oh, how can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? 
How can I destroy you like Agma or demolish you like Zimboam? My heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows. No, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel, for I am God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One living among you, and I will not come to destroy. For someday the people will follow me. I, the Lord, will roar like a lion. And when I roar, my people will return trembling from the west. Like a flock of birds, they will come from Egypt, trembling like doves. They will return from Assyria, and I will bring them home again, says the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing upon this reading. From Luke chapter 12. Then someone calls from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have enough room to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. The line from Hosea, I think it was chapter, I think it was verse 4 and 5, somewhere in there. Depending on what Bible verse you, or Bible version you read, the line says something to the effect of, I led them with cords of kindness. I think yours read ropes, I think. Cords of kindness with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. And it reminded me of the phrase from not so many years ago, uh, to practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. Everybody remember that phrase? That, that, it still goes on today, kind of a pay it forward kind of thing now, right? Anybody ever been the recipient of that random act of kindness? Gone through the drive through or maybe you've done it to somebody else, right? Some say it started when someone stopped at the toll booth on the Golden Gate Bridge and not only paid their own toll, but then paid for the car behind them as well. And that led to the idea to practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. The earliest known reference to the term random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty appeared what is believed to be uh, the earliest known reference in the July 1985 issue of the influential countercultural journal called Whole Earth Review. The California writer, uh, the California based writer Ann Herbert, penned an article entitled Random Kindness and Senseless Acts of Beauty kind of in, the, in response to some of the senseless acts of violence that were going on and still go on, that was a response to that. Practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. I want you to know that I think random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty are a beautiful way to share you know, the love of God with others. There's no better feeling sometimes to, uh, you know, be able to do that for somebody else or be the recipient of that. I, it's great to offer surprising help right, to others or to do nice things unexpectedly for someone else. There is something to be said for the serendipity of it all. Along with variety, it adds spice to life. You just, you know, you pay for somebody's coffee or meal in the drive through and drive off and then they're surprised and you don't have any time to, they can't get out and thank you, they can't reciprocate that to you. It's just that serendipity and just the, the joy of knowing that someone thought enough to just do that randomly. That being said, this morning I also want to suggest to you and to all of us that we need more than just that. 
we may need more than just random acts of kindness. Sometimes we do need discipline practices of kindness. Because we need love for the long haul and not just at random times in our lives. God's love, I don't think, it's not random. God's love is very consistent. When you teach your kid to walk, how many of you took them to the top of the stairs and said, good luck? <laughs> when you teach someone to swim, now this one I'm not so sure about because I think this is sometimes, sometimes people's practice, you know, you wouldn't just throw somebody out in the middle of the deep water, right, and say, sink or swim? Maybe. Some of you are like, well, I might, I might. Right? Yeah. I would sink. So. Some things just aren't meant to be done randomly, right? We can't always afford the random act because they're just random. We just never know when they're going to happen. It just may happen. Who knows when it's going to take place? We can't always afford random in our relationships, in our friendships, in our families, in our church, you know, globally, nationally. Sometimes we need to really plan carefully and we need to have disciplined acts of kindness and love that is very intentional and very purposeful. Sometimes we need to be very intentional about how we treat others. Because sometimes randomly, well, it can go either way, right? Hosea speaks of cords of human kindness and ties of love which are led by God. These cords may seem random, but we need something for that long haul, something that we can count on so that community can last and last and persevere. Some of the symbols connecting us are bands of love. They are unique symbols representing our relationship to one another and to each other. Old family pictures, right, are bands of love. Think about the, I don't know, we don't, we don't have pictures that, we don't really have pictures anymore. Anybody have boxes of pictures still? Yeah. You can go through, yeah? We're losing that little bit of uh, uh, life because we have our pictures, I don't have my phone with me, pictures are on our phones now, aren't they? Stored in Google Drives and Amazon and all that kind of stuff, online. If you go through those boxes of pictures or photo albums, you know, they connect you to a past, a present, they connect you to one another. Shared experiences are bands of love. Think about uh, you know, the stories that we share with one another. Oh, remember when? Remember this? You know, the history of, of our life together? Jewelry, maybe. Family heirlooms. Rings that we wear. Things like that. Our bands of love. Family heirlooms that are passed down from one generation to the next. You know, you go into somebody's home. Well, that was my great-grandmother, right? And that was passed down to her mother, you know, and so on and so on. They connect us. They're band, they're, those are bands of love that tie us together. Anything else you can think of that would be a, a band of love? Those are some things I came up with. Any other thing? What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. both of you are thinking about food right now. Yes, I like it. So am I a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Recipes. Absolutely. This is how my, you know, how so and so, whoever it might have been in your family history, right? There's a story about that, that, that uh, the, the, the girl was, the mom was teaching the daughter how to cook a ham, and she cut the two ends off the ham, put it in the pan, and put it in the oven, right? And, you know, it came out wonderful, she said, but the daughter asked her, you know, well, why did you, you know, what was the secret, was there a secret, you know, of cutting the two ends off of the ham? Well, it didn't fit in the pan, because that's why they cut the two ends off, so. <laughs> but years ago, <laughs> it didn't fit in the pan, but that's how they were taught, so they just kept doing it. But absolutely, family recipes, anything else? How about shared sorrow? Shared sorrow. Heartache or loss connects us to one another. This communion cup, this table, this bread and cup, bands of love reminding us of our connection with God and to one another. I believe that one of the deepest desires of every man, woman, and child, if not the very deepest desire, but one of the deepest, is to know kindness and love. God shares the gift of kindness and love through each of us. Alexander Irvin writes, God takes a hand whenever God can find it and just does what God likes with it. Sometimes God takes a minister's hand and lays it on a child's head in benediction. And then God takes the hand of a doctor to relieve the pain of someone who is suffering. The hand of a mother to guide a child. 
And sometimes God takes a hand of an elderly individual, man or woman, to give comfort to a neighbor. They're all hands touched by God's spirit, and God's spirit everywhere is looking for hands to use in that sense. One of my favorite movies from years and years ago, this is an older movie, Everybody, everyone want to see Grand Canyon? It's a movie from a while back. It tells the story of ordinary people who are being saved not by the very extraordinary acts of unusual men and women, but by the ordinary things like kindness, loyalty, consideration, and honesty. Things that are not simple at all, but always miraculous in some nature. And this is how we experience, I think, the divine love of Christ in our own lives, isn't it? Through our experience of those same ordinary things like kindness, loyalty, consideration, and honesty. Those little simple things that are just maybe not even thought of, but just done. Carl Rayner once wrote, to keep on through dull, tedious, everyday existence can often be more difficult than a unique deed whose heroism makes us run the danger of pride. Listen to that again. To keep on through dull, tedious, everyday existence can often be more difficult than a unique deed whose heroism makes us run the danger of pride. That's the danger, I think, of, running, or, of relying on random acts of kindness and selfless acts of beauty, especially the randomness of it. We live in a real world where people need kindness and love and beauty every day, not just as a break in the tedium of everyday existence. That's where it is, I think, for most of us, for so many people. Slugging it out day by day, trying to make ends meet, and to be as good as we can be at what we do, and to use what we have responsibly, trying to be honest, kind, and just. I'm good at three out of the two, or two out of the three there. How about you, Sharon? Three out of three, that's okay. Oh, you're perfect. Trying to be honest, aren't we all trying to be honest, kind, and just? Rayner also wrote that when we are true to our conscience, God's kingdom comes to us just where we are, living quite ordinarily, ordinarily, carrying on patiently. Fred Craddock tells a great story. One particular Sunday afternoon, when they all piled in the car, mom and dad and the kids, they went for a, church, a drive after church. Out in the country, in the crisp, clean air, leaves turning to the reds and yellows of the fall. Without a care, they drove through the fields and just watched the, the world go by. And suddenly, the calm was broken by an excited, Daddy, Daddy, stop the car! There's a little kitty by the side of the road. Turn around, Dad. Let's go back. The kitty's by the big tree. To which Fred said, he said, no, the kitty has a home. We're not going to go back to get the cat. A second little voice then plea, joined the plea, Please, Daddy, the little kitty's all alone. Daddy, the kitty's lost and doesn't have a home. No, we don't need a cat, said Fred. Now you kids just be quiet and enjoy the ride. The last thing that he wanted was a cat, especially a kitten. So he drove on as a, as a cold silence gave kind of a, a heaviness in the air in the car, as you might expect, right? We've all been there. But the children would not be so easily denied, and as the drops of rain began to fall and spatter against the windshield, they started to sniffle a little bit. The little kitty doesn't have a mommy or a daddy, and it's cold and it's starting to rain. Daddy, please go back. He looked over at her. Their eyes met, and they knew then that they must go back. I'm turning back, but that cat's probably gone on home. You'll see. And in a few minutes, they were back there. There was a, this little, wet, scrawny, thin thing that, that thought it was a cat. They got out of the car, and one of the children took the cat, or took their coat off and wrapped up the little kitten and handed the coat to Dad. And when he reached down to pick up, the pitiful thing hissed and spit and scratched him. Well, they took that little cat home. It seemed to know that there was one in the house who had been reluctant if not objectionable to rescuing it, whenever there was an opportunity, the cat reminded him of that, that you know, reluctance of saving the little kitten. He'd arch its back and maybe hiss and maybe even give a little scratch on Fred. And one evening, years later, when he sat in the chair reading the newspaper, he felt something brush against his leg, and then again, brush again, 
He reached down and the cat rubbed against his hand and he could hear a purr begin to come from that little kitten, from the cat that they had rescued, the little kitten they rescued. So what had happened? In some way it was the bands of love and cords of kindness. Not random, not always even willingly shared, but consistent, disciplined, and ultimately effective. I share a poem by the a artist, um, Mexican performer, and ventriloquist. The poem is originally attributed to uh, Garcia Marquez, but it's actually written by Johnny Welch, who was a Mexican performer and ventriloquist. It describes the life of one who knows those bands of love and cords of kindness. It's entitled The Puppet Poem, <clears throat> and he writes, If God for an instant would forget that I am a cloth marionette and would give me a piece of life, possibly I would not say all that I think, but would give value to all things. And not for what they are worth, but for what they need. I would sleep little, and dream more. I understand that for each minute that we close our eyes, we lose 60 seconds of life. I would walk when others pause, wake when others sleep. I would listen when others talk, and how I would enjoy a good chocolate ice cream. If God would give me a piece of life, I would dress simply, throw myself face down, leaving bare not only my body, but my soul. My God, if I had a heart, I would write my hate on ice and wait for the sun to rise. I would paint with a dream of Van Gogh on the stars, a poem of Benedetti's, and a song of Seurat's. It would be the serenade I would offer to the moon. I would water the roses with my tears so I could feel the pain of their thorns, the incarnate kiss of their petals. My God, if I had a piece of life, I would not let a single day pass by without telling the people I love that I love them. I would convince each woman or man that they are my favorites, and I would live in love with love. I would prove to people how mistaken they are to think that they stop falling in love when they grow old without knowing that they grow old when they stop falling in love. a beautiful poem, reminding us that there is a God, there is a divine current flowing through this creation, right, who longs to draw us all closer together with those bands of love and cords of kindness as we are drawn to this table to share this meal and this cup and this bread. May it become for us a band of love and may the bread become cords of kindness. Our journey forward as a congregation I've been doing a lot of thinking about our journey forward as a congregation, as a community of faith, requires us, it will require us to have conversations about our future. It will ask of us to make decisions for the good of the church. We will be challenged by each other as we seek God's will for us. And we may not always agree. Every decision, every direction may not be unanimously decided upon, right? And I think that is why it is so vitally important that we are intentional about our love and care for one another. When our way forward becomes challenging, when it becomes difficult and possibly even maybe at times a little painful, we can't just rely on the randomness of our kindness and generosity and our love for one another, but also on purposeful, purposeful acts of love and kindness and understanding that bind us together. Let us pray. God, there is so much randomness to life at times. Some of it is joyful, some of it is painful. And we pray that as a church family, we experience some of that, but also encourage us and empower us to be very intentional about our love for one another for our seeking of your will, your direction, your path. Help us to be intentional about this, sharing the beauty of being a church family and the love and kindness and generosity that we have for one another. In Christ's name, amen.
our hymn of invitation is just a um, one verse hymn, but we're going to sing it uh, a couple of times. The first uh, verse is Into My Heart, uh, and then we'll uh, sing uh, another verse uh, with Into My, and I'll ask for a suggestion uh, for that one. We'll stop after the first verse, and then I'll, all right? All right? <laughs> if you don't. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to stay, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Who's got another verse? Into my what? Brain? All right. All right. Into my brain. Into my mood. Come into my brain. Lord Jesus, come in today. Come in to stay. Excellent. Last Wednesday was my mother's 99th birthday. Oh, that's wow. Right. Hey, hey. I talked to Sharon Bronsick this morning, and Sharon wanted me to ask or to thank you for your prayers for Eunice, her sister, who's 92. And Eunice has had some health concerns and went home this week after a lengthy um, Good. time in nursing home. Gene? Yes. Huh. I'm too young to be married to a man so old, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just ask, like to ask for prayers uh, for all our service men and women, but especially the one near and dear to my heart, because August starts the tour, so keep them in your prayers, please. Yep. Um, Logan, that's the little guy with cancer, leukemia. His numbers came up enough that they could start what is now the most intensive part of his chemo. Um, they got the first dose, and they just packed up in their camper And when he got home from the hospital and just went away for a couple days. But the pictures just broke our hearts, didn't it? Hmm. So this will, if this doesn't affect him, I don't know what will happen. He's had trouble with every phase of it. So we just asked that, that God would be in the medicine, and with his family, because this is a family so stressed anyway, so mm -hmm. all, pr all kinds of prayers for Logan. Yep, definitely. And for Joanne, I'm 
This is Joanne Early. Because my mom drives Sharon Bronson most places, um, she might need some assistance. Good to know. Early. Um, thank you for your prayers for everything that's going on with my family. My um, stepmother was actually released to a rehab center. Unfortunately, my father checked her out the very next day. So we are dealing with all of that at home, and um, it's been interesting, to say the least. And my brother it continues to um, get worse, and so we're just asking for continued prayers. Thank you. I want to lift up. Uh, I, I know there's been awful flooding in Kentucky, and I think they're headed, rain's headed that way yet today or tonight, sometime again. Uh, and some of the heat wave stuff going on is just uh, way too hot. Uh, I think it was Portland. I think they said there was five or six people died out in Portland for uh, the heat because due to the heat. So just pray for all those that are dealing with that. Anything else? Let's go to God in prayer. God, our creator and guide, be close to us and hear the prayers of all who praise you. Forgive us when we forget to trust you. Help us not to seek things for ourselves, but with your help to provide for all in need. Restore us to life, Lord, and keep us safe in your love. Giver of all good gifts, teach us to treasure Christ and his grace above all earthly possessions. Help us to cast our lot with life and not with death with grace and not with judgment, with love and not with hate, with giving and not with receiving, with praising and not being praised, with trusting and not with fear. O oh, merciful God, we pray for your blessing to be upon others. Reach out through your spirit using us or others or simply using your hand to bring to pass that which is needed most in their lives right now. You have heard the prayers of so many. We pray for Eunice and for uh, Logan, we pray for Joanne and for uh, families that uh, struggle sometimes with challenges that uh, don't seem to have resolution. We lift up to you celebrations of birthdays. We pray for uh, those servicemen and women who uh, make the ultimate sacrifice of being away from home and family to serve their country, put themselves in harm's way, be with them. Be with all those who are dealing with floods in Kentucky, for all those who are dealing with heat waves and extreme heat. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Christ to multiply all that you have given us to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us to be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. We pray for the church gathered today, both here and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. And we lift up to you those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those who are oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair. Minister by your spirit and by us to all those whom we have prayed for, and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. We lift up to you the prayers of our hearts, of our soul, of our lives, O oh God. In Christ's name, amen. Just as Christ has taught the way of life to us, the church, we have the responsibility of bringing life to the world around us through our ministries and the outreach of missions through our connections of faith around the globe. 
Let us offer gratefully and sacrificially to the Lord work of God who has given all for us. You can give um, through tithe.ly um, and we also still physically will take your money. Thank you, God, for the generosity that enables us to share. We are rich in many things. Help us to empty ourselves of pretense, even as we pour out gifts of gratitude. We dedicate our offerings and ourselves to shaping the community you intend in the spirit of Christ. Amen. We will um, be singing Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether from the Chalice Hymnal. I think we've sang this one before. Uh, would you like uh, Diane to play it through once so we have to hear the hymn or hear the tune? Play it through once. That's perfect. <laughs> Very good on that song. 
beautiful song. Yesterday, I was, uh, had the privilege and honor of performing a wedding for a couple that, uh, over in the Napoleon area, Shady Brook Acres Hitching Post, it's called. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. It's a beautiful setting for a wedding. And uh, the um, groom happened to be stationed in Alaska, in the military in Alaska, and the bride was here in Northwest Ohio. So they did a lot of FaceTime, and face, you know, all that uh, uh, technology you know, connections. Uh, but as it, when they um, came time for the wedding, at rehearsal time on Friday, you know, they were all kind of goofy and silly, and you know, and then it came time for the wedding, and the, the, before the wedding, the groom, the groom, the stand around, they all had their dark sunglasses on, and being, uh, you know, typical military, you know, just kind of, you know, tough guy, you know, sort of tough guy, right, and thing. Uh, then they had written their own vows, right, and uh, he went first. And he got about uh, a third of the way through and decided to put his sunglasses back on because the tears started to flow uh, when he got to his vows that he had written. He didn't really write anything. He just started talking about the, when they met and how he knew that she was the one. And uh, You know, no matter how tough somebody might believe themselves to be or want to be, uh, and how, how you want to, and then, so he put his sunglasses back on, so, you know, and then afterward he said, I wasn't crying, I was sweating. You know, he was joking around, but... Uh, we come to a table where we are bare before God. And at that moment, that groom was bare and vulnerable and open to his bride-to-be in a way that probably, you know, he didn't expect would happen at that moment. When we come to this table, we come bare to God. We can put all kinds of stuff in front of our face or, or you know, fill our lives with all kinds of stuff. But God sees through all of that. And we come to a table where God says, you know what, I know it all. I know everything about you. And you are welcome to this table. Come to this table. I want you, I expect you to be at this table of grace, forgiveness, and love. And so we come to this table that Christ shared with his disciples. Where he broke bread, shared a meal, and said, you know, this bread, this time, is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And he shared a cup. symbol of his shed blood. He said, take and drink of this cup, for it is my, my blood shed for you. Do this also in remembrance of me. We won't do it again until we do it again anew in my Father's kingdom. Let us come to the table. Please join me in our communion prayer. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the blessings to gather today and to have a presence at your table. We thank you for today's teachings. We truly are connected to each other through the common threads of love, kindness, and our faith in you. As we partake in the bread and the cup, we remember your love through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Through this loving act, you have given us forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. Thank you. As we go about our daily lives, we look forward to seeing you in the complicated as well as the simple everyday things we do. And in your name we pray, amen. Please stand and join in our closing hymn. 
to God be the glory, number 72 in the chalice hymn. <laughs> is good all the time. and all the time, all 